Section 1. You will hear part of a conversation between a customer and the owner of an IT store. First, you have some time to look at questions 1 to 8. You will see that there is an example that has been done for you. On this occasion only, the conversation relating to this will be played first. So, before we go any further, can we just confirm what's been agreed so far? As it's starting to get a little complicated. Certainly. Tell you what, why don't I start to make out the invoice? Should I address it to you personally, or is there a business name you'd like me to use? We trade under the name Ben and Die Enterprises. The invoice is being made out to Ben and Die Enterprises. So you write Enterprises in the space provided. You should answer the questions as you listen, because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions 1 to 8. So, before we go any further, can we just confirm what has been agreed so far, as it's starting to get a little complicated? Certainly. Tell you what, why don't I start to make out the invoice? Should I address it to you personally, or is there a business name you'd like me to use? We trade under the name Ben and Die Enterprises. OK. Now, as you were talking to one of my sales reps to start with, I'm going to put him down as the contact on the invoice. That way, he'll get the commission on this sale, you see. His name was Rowan Laver, is that right? Rather peculiar name, but a lovely man. You almost got it. It's Rome, as in the city, and Laver, L-A-V-E-R. Your order number is 6589B521. You're paying in full, is that right? Yes. OK. Today's the 4th of April, so we'll put a due date of the 10th on there. Now, do you remember your order details? Yes. Uh, first there was the filing cabinet. Of course, for a rate of £15 each. Didn't you order print paper as well? Yes, we're taking 20 glossy photo paper bundles. What's the unit price again? It works out at £20 per bundle and £400 in total. And Rome said we could do a deal on the software packages, isn't that right? Yes. Seeing as you bought five at once, we'll reduce the unit price to £100 from £120, leaving us with a total amount of £500. I needn't remind you that there is an additional fixed charge, totalling £40, specifically for the software installation. Of course. So... Getting to a total figure then including sales tax, 16% VAT is added on. That gives us £1,160 by my reckoning. By VAT, do you mean sales tax? Isn't that 10%? It's 25% on some products and 10% on others. We work out an aggregate figure and apply it to all goods sold. In this case, it was 16% as I've mentioned. Fair enough. Before listening to the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 9 to 10. Now listen and answer questions 9 to 10. Listen, I know the due date isn't for a week, but do you mind if I write you out a cheque today? Not at all. You can make it out to me, Michael McCloskey. How do you spell that then? What, McCloskey? It's capital M, C, capital C, L, O, S, K, E, Y. Got it. And how much should I make it out for in total? £1,500, please. 
£1,500? Yes, that's including my consultancy service fees. Oh, I almost forgot about that. Let me make a note here on the cheque. Includes consultancy fees. Now we're almost done. That's the end of section one. You have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to Section 2. Section 2. You will hear a tour guide talking to her tour group. First, you will have time to look at questions 11 to 16. Now listen carefully and answer questions 11 to 16. We're approaching Gateman's house now, which is at the entrance to Lord Thundleberry's estate. The tour shall begin shortly, so I want to draw your attention to a few things on the map and remind everyone of the itinerary. First of all, we're going to head to the Lord's residence to view the inside of this beautiful 18th century building. After that, we have a short trip across the road to the Classic Car Centre. This showcases the Lord's personal collection of classic cars, one of the largest in the world. Then, we'll head back down the road, leading away from the Lord's residence, and take a right. This will lead us up to the organic farm. Here, you'll learn how to grow your own organic vegetables and taste some of the fresh food that is made by the estate's excellent on-site chefs. From the organic farm, we'll head to the other side of the main road. You are likely to catch sight of many deer grazing on this part of the estate. On the right-hand side of the road, there's the wine museum that's close to the vineyard you see on the map there. After that, we'll head back to Gatesman's house for afternoon tea. Once we've had some refreshments, we'll jump back onto the bus and drive a little way up the road to the estate library which is on the right-hand side. The library has a huge collection of books, so you are sure to find something of interest there. Next, we're on to the old mill, which is just a little way up the minor road across from the library. Finally, we'll continue on up the minor road until we come to the Great Waterfall. This is a spectacular feature of the estate and one of the largest man-made waterfalls in the British Isles. It won't fail to impress, I can assure you. Before you hear the rest of the discussion, you have some time to look at questions 17 to 20. Now listen and answer questions 17 to 20. Now, I just have a few guidelines to outline before we embark on our tour. First of all, please bear in mind that this is the private residence of the Lord and it is a privilege to be shown around the estate. The estate is only open for pre-arranged visits. I would ask all of you to be on the best possible conduct and keep noise levels down in consideration of the people who live and work here. This is, after all, a fully functional estate and the main residency of Lord Thundleberry himself. Please refrain from wandering away from the main tour party. Areas of the estate which have restricted access should not be trespassed under any circumstances. If anyone fails to observe these rules, our tour group could be evicted immediately. Finally, it will be some time before we return to the Gatesman's house for afternoon tea. So I suggest we set aside a half hour or so 
to enjoy the packed lunch that the tour organiser provided in the Rose Gardens outside the Laws residence at around midday. OK, if no one has any questions, shall we proceed? That's the end of Section 2. You have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to Section 3. Section 3. You will hear a discussion between two work colleagues and their manager about the restructuring of their company. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 25. Now listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 25. Come in, both of you. I believe you wanted to talk to me about something, is that right? Yes. Basically, all the staff are concerned about what the restructuring of the company is going to mean for them. None more so than myself and Nam, as we are the newest members. Oh, as I said to all staff at the meeting last week, there's no cause for concern. There will be no compulsory redundancies. All redundancies will be on a voluntary basis. Yes, we, we understand that. But to tell the truth, we just want a little reassurance that our jobs are safe. Look, Anne and Penny, the company isn't going to be short-sighted and let its bright young minds go. Besides, we've already met our target for the number of voluntary redundancies we want to secure. In fact, there's a waiting list. You know as well as I do that the age profile of staff at this company needs to come down. A lot of our employees are close to retirement age and are just going through the motions until they can take their pensions. That's why we decided on this redundancy initiative. We want to encourage those that would be happy to leave to do so and employ younger, more motivated staff. I guess that makes us feel a little better. But we're also worried about the upcoming salary review. What will it mean for us? Given the fact that the company's motivation for this restructuring initiative is not to cut costs, one again, you needn't be worried that there will be a negative effect on your salaries. We are running a very profitable business and we will reward our top performers in the upcoming review. Both of you fall into that category so you can expect a healthy bonus and salary increase. Simple as that. That's good to know. Another thing on our minds was the fact that with all these voluntary redundancies happening in the next few months, there will be a lot of positions opening up higher in the company. What we were wondering is, will the recruitment drive be an internal or an external one? Obviously, we will recruit internally where possible. That has always been company policy. So, if you're asking me will there be opportunities to gain a promotion in the near future, then the answer is very definitely yes. The type of candidate we would be looking for has a proven track record and is performance driven. How can we improve our chances of getting promoted then when the opportunity arises? Well, in the meantime, be prepared to take on additional responsibilities, especially those relating to the management of other members of staff. Obviously, the higher up you go in the company, the more involved you'll be in managing people. What the management team is looking for then is proof that you can work effectively with and manage other members of staff. Before you hear the rest of the discussion, you have some time to look at questions 26 to 30.
Now listen and answer questions 26 to 30. One more thing. Go on. This project you've given us to manage, is it a test of our abilities? I guess you could say it is a test of sorts, but look at it more as a chance for you to prove yourselves. Actually, now that I have you both here in private, can we talk about that a bit? Of course. OK. Penny, let's start with you. Has the timescale been agreed yet? Yes. You said we have a total of eight weeks to bring the product to launch. So we've decided to allocate three weeks at the beginning to product research and prototype testing. Very good. Then after that, we are going to spend a further three weeks formulating our marketing strategy and doing some research and testing on a sample of the target market itself to get some feedback. And presumably the last two weeks will be devoted to the launch? Exactly. Now, let's talk estimated costs. Well, you've given us a total budget of £100,000. Of that, we're allocating 50% to product development and testing, a further 25% to marketing, and £25,000 will be spent on the launch. Penny, give me a breakdown of the launch costs, would you? Sure. £10,000 will be spent on hiring and decorating the venue, £10,000 will be spent on promotional work and the remaining money will be used to pay for catering and administrative costs. Uh, I'm very happy with that, to be honest. As I said, you guys should stop worrying. You're doing a fantastic job, so keep it up. That's the end of Section 3. You have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to Section 4. Section 4. You will hear part of a careers advice talk on working freelance. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Now listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. Working for an employer in a 9 to 5 job has long been the accepted norm. However, this could soon be set to change. A rising level of unemployment, combined with a sense of disillusionment amongst employees with their workaday lives, is at the root of this modern day revolution in the workplace. Now, there is a growing trend amongst people of all ages and from all walks of life to opt for freelance work rather than working for an employer. It sounds a risky option and a potentially stressful one, but on the whole, the benefits of freelancing seem to vastly outweigh those of working for someone else. In fact, Recent research has shown that those who quit their jobs to work for themselves are the country's happiest and most productive workers. A study conducted by Dr Jonathan Sapsed from Brighton University's Business School in conjunction with the Arts and Humanities Research Council looked at a total of 304 freelancers who were pursuing a range of professions in southern England. 
they found that, far from struggling to get by, many were not only doing well, but excelling in their new professions. So, what are the advantages of freelancing? Well, there are many. One of the most obvious benefits is not having to be answerable to a boss and having to face criticism or unfair demands. In addition, not being based in an office or shared workplace with competitive or difficult colleagues is another bonus. But what is probably the most attractive pull of working freelance is the freedom to determine your own work schedule. You are no longer at the mercy of a timetable dictated to you by your employer. If you have family commitments, these can easily be fitted around your working hours. Furthermore, if you have an off day one day, it's easy to make up time another day without having to face your employer's wrath when you are being less productive than usual. Those who work in creative and digital industries stand to benefit most from working freelance. In these fields, workers are at liberty to choose their ideal working location as they are not restricted to working in a set place. It really is an ideal lifestyle that many would aspire to if they were more aware of the options available to them. Lastly, to add to an already convincing list of benefits from doing freelance work, there is the financial reward. Freelancers typically work a 38-hour week and earn a median wage of £43,000, well above the national average of £25,000, and are happier than other workers. It seems that people are now catching on to the myriad benefits that come with working as a freelancer. Currently, there are about 31 million people in work in Britain, and already 4.6 million are self-employed, thereby displaying the vitality of the freelance economy. In fact, so popular is freelancing becoming that it has even been suggested that the government needs to devise a new tax and other policies to support freelancers. Freelancing would seem to be the future of employment and the way forward. It is certainly well worth considering freelancing if you are doubtful about committing to working in a structured environment and would like more freedom and autonomy in your work. That is the end of section 4. You now have half a minute to check your answers. That is the end of the listening test. You now have 10 minutes to transfer your answers to the listening answer sheet.